Hello everybody, this is the Praetorian again, and I'm here for part two of the system we know according to timeline. I haven't made a blog of this yet, this is actually something that I have been working on. The Socialist Party, also the French section of Workers International, traces its roots all the way back to the French Revolution. Its later parties formed in the 19th century, formally established in 1905. Inspired by politicians and social theorists such as Charles Fourier, Henry de Saint Simon, Francis Noel Babeuf, Augusta Lacaille, and Louis Blanc. The four dominant forms of socialism were your utopian, syndicalist, revolutionary, and reformist. France's first socialist party was called the French Workers' Party. In the Third Republic era of France between 1894 to 1906, the Dreyfus Affair created political crisis and controversy centered around the innocence or guilt of a French officer, Alfred Dreyfus, who was convicted of treason. Dreyfus was an army captain who allegedly sold military secrets to the Germans in 1894. At, the, at first, the public believed his guilt. Many, though, have also claimed that it was only because he was Jewish that he was prosecuted. It was also stated that much of the publicity concerning the case came from anti-Semitic publications. Uh, accusations were apparently made stating that Dreyfus symbolized the disloyalty of French Jews. At first, the only efforts made to reverse the sentence were made by Alfred Dreyfus's family. Soon, though, evidence started to point towards guilt of another off Ferdinand Wilson Esterhazy. <clears throat> the evidence pointed towards Esterhazy presented itself in 1896. Accusations made against Esterhazy resulted in court-martial that acquitted him in 1898. Protests broke out and writers like Emile Zola were found guilty for libel. And yet Alfred Dreyfus was a relative to Richard Dreyfus. I suggest that if you haven't watched the movie check it out if you have watched the movie good for you <clears throat> it's the story of Richard Dreyfus's grandfather or great-grandfather I can't remember which one and his time on Devil's Island for being accused of uh, selling secrets to to the Germans the Dreyfus uh, affair gained plenty of, of publicity splitting the French into two opposing camps, the anti-Dreyfusards and the Dreyfusards. The Dreyfusards saw the issue as a principle of freedom for the individual subordinated to that of national security. They wanted the military to be more Republican, placing it under parliamentary control. <clears throat> the anti-Dreyfusards, though, felt that the controversy was an attempt by their, their nation's enemies to discredit the military and weaken France. In 1898, a document implicating Dreyfus was discovered as a forgery. Major Hubert Joseph Henry confessed to fabricating the document in order to strengthen the army's position. The Republican parties in the Chamber of Deputies recognized that the increasingly vocal nationalist right posed a threat to the parliamentary regi regime. In response to protests and demonstrations, a left-wing coalition of radicals was formed in 1899. 
led by Rene Waldick Rousseau. Its main purposes were defeating the Republic and settle the Dreyfus case. When a new court martial was held in 1899, Dreyfus was again found guilty. The President of the Republic pardoned him, though, in order for the issue to be resolved. In 1906, a civilian court of appeals finally set aside the judgment by Rene's court and Dreyfus was released. The French army didn't publicly declare Alfred Dreyfus innocent until 1995. This case was to be a start in a new phase of the Third Republic with series of radical-led governments resulting in the formal separation of church and state within France. The facts are that in France there was no separation of church and state until this and, and that was well into the <clears throat> beginning of the 1900s to be the 20th century. Leon Blum was the first socialist premier of France presiding over the Popular Front coalition between 1936 and 37. Blum was born into a Jewish family from Alsace, a region that was former pro province of France, located between the Vosges and the Rhine. He became interested in politics when he became involved in the Dreyfus Affair. Okay. Because of his admi admiration for, for Jean Juris, Bloom joined the French Socialist Party in 1904. First elected to the Chamber of Deputies in 1919, Bloom's first task came with reconstructing the Socialist Party due to a split in the party in 1920 when its communist branch won the majority at the party's Congress of Tours. Bloom ranks as the chief founder of the modern French social, Socialist Party in its journal, Le Populaire. In 1932, he developed a socialist program of pacifism, nationalization of French industry and measures against unemployment. These efforts contributed to the formation of the French leftist alliance known as the Popular Front. So right there you start to understand that France actually had their own communist party and from the beginning or the late part of 1800 into the beginning of the 1900 the French were socialists um, they had a split in their socialist party because the communists had actually taken it over because within their their party they give control over to the groups that have the majority and at that time the communists had a stronger following so in order to reorganize their socialist party they uh, appointed Bloom to come in and literally reorganize it and the popular front was basically formed <coughs> If you guys haven't heard about the Popular Front, I suggest you read up on that. That will give you a lot of information concerning socialism. Winning the majority of the Chamber of Deputies in 1936, the Popular Front became France's official government. Bloom became premier as its party leader becoming the first socialist and Jewish premier of France. He introduced with much opposition the 40-hour week, the work week, paid vacation, and collective bargaining for the workers. 
Saloon nationalized France's, France's war industry and the Bank of France but his majority setback was national defense, especially with concerns to the Rome-Berlin axis in his non-intervention in the Spanish Civil War. Bloom's plans to establish state control over private industry and finance caused bitter hostility among French business leaders in 1937. Bloom eventually resigned as premier because the conservatives majority would not permit him emergency decree powers to t tackle the country's financial problems.